Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well, and welcome to this community showdown. It's going to be the Vampire Counts led by Subutai and Manfred von Baldstein facing off against the Lizardmen, who shall be helmed by Tim the Wilder in the Banana Slan, looking to counter the death with a lot of life, I would imagine. Now, as far as the Undead build goes, it's going to be Mass Chaff, so certainly very much in the flavor of Vampire Counts. You have a massive horde of the Undead being led by a very scary Vampire Count up on a dragon, and... Yeah, zombies and skeletons not going to win any beauty contests, but they can take a beating and uh, serve as kind of a blade of wounds for your big dragon character. The corpse guard also makes them a little bit more resilient, does have a nice little stat buff here, so it gives them vigor and melee attack and melee defense. So skeletons go up to a respectable 23 and 27, honestly not that different from like men-at-arms or something like that. So that's going to be it with skeleton spears in the back, and it is going to be double white kings on foot. White kings are quite good against lizards. Uh, they can hunt down the salamanders on horseback. The anti-infantry bonus is good against skinks and sars, and scabsgrave is also very good against the uh, skinks, which are, you know, pretty common nowadays. That's going to be two of those. Now up in the sky for Manfred. Manfred is, I think, pretty good here for one reason. That reason is Fate of Buna. So Fate of Buna is the hard counter to Salamanders, and Salamanders are super juicy to take in this matchup as a lizard player because uh, they just wreck Cryptors, they kill the Mortis Engines, the Corpse Guards, the characters. Like Salamanders are pretty much good against most of the Vampire Count roster. So having the Fate of Buna to pretty much one-shot them is very good. And on top of that, Manfred doesn't really care too much about Winds of Magic uh, because he can essentially infinitely regenerate Winds of Magic. Now in Domination, that's obviously not going to be an issue because there are constraints on the, uh, the end of the game. But uh, yeah, it's very powerful. So if he's in combat, every second he's in combat, uh, he's going to be generating uh, not only power recharge rate for you, but also 0.10 reserves. So after, you know, 10 seconds in combat, he's going to be getting there. It's, it's pretty cool. And he has the death passive as well. So whenever you cast a spell with death, it's going to be netting you 2.5 wins of magic uh, reserves, which is great. So yeah, he's a powerhouse in terms of casting. And that's it. Now for Tim the Wilder. Tim the Wilder, of course, the champion of our most recent uh, big chaos clash we had, uh, the Creative Assembly event. That was quite a bit of fun. He's going to be here with the Lizards. He's got a front line of Skinks, a secondary line of Salamanders, and it is going to be a Slan of Life. So I'm curious to see if this Slan is going to be able to use like a Shield of the Old Ones and Earthblood to kind of counter that Buna and make it more cost ineffective. We got Sara Spears, uh, which are good because they beat down the Chaff just fine, and they can handle Cryptors and various other monsters, right? So I like the build here from Old Tim. Now we'll do a little bit of fast forwarding while the two players posture up and say hello to one another. We do see the Scab Strength going down. That was a great cast there by Subutai. Wow, big damage on those uh, Skinks. And you can see what it's good for. And it has several charges, I think three or two. Looks like it's going to be two. But yeah, you don't want any piece of those Croxagores. And uh, we'll be fast forwarding while the zombie army shambles here into position in just a moment. And the Collins for Subutai here are going to be Grave Guards. So obviously you want some good, decent quality infantry. But right now it looks like he's just kind of using his magic, trying to get Bunas off on the Salamanders, getting those Scab Strength charges off. Kind of like the skirmishing, feeling each other out part of the game. And for Tim the Wilder, it's going to be Skink Skirmishers, Cohorts, a lot of poke. Uh, we'll see how good it is against his mass legion of bodies. I mean, the amount of HP on the battlefield for the vampire counts is absolutely insane. It's so much. I mean, zombies have 12,000 HP. Skeletons have 9.7. I mean, I think like a lot of infantry in the game have like 8 or 9. And zombies just have so much HP. I mean, yeah, obviously they're not really going to do much. They have 5 melee attack and 6 melee defense. But, you know, it, it gets there eventually. Especially if you have corpse guards mixed in. They can start chipping away at your opponent over time. So Manfred is going to want to use his mighty ball dragon as well to get breath attacks right down the pipe on the Sara Spears. That's what he's here for. Cohort of Foddle is going to be a tough one to deal with. Probably one of the better ways to do it for Vampire Counts is just to get them with, um, you know, Skeleton Spears or Cryptors or something like that and nibble them down. So now we get to see it. This is one of the main reasons I wanted to cast this here. So we do have the Shield of the Old Ones, 20% ward save, and no Earth Blood though, but it's still doing a lot of damage against the Salamander Hunting Pack. But that obviously is probably going to keep them from like breaking and shattering. And then from there, the Earth Bloods. And yeah, he uses Cold Blooded as well. Very interesting. That was actually a decent tech because. Oftentimes it will route the Salamanders off the battlefield, although it still might get them. The Cold Blood is barely keeping them together, and they hold with two leadership. And they still have 32 of 32 models. That's pretty insane how that works. So obviously Earthbloods are going to be incredibly cost-effective now. Tim the Wilder shooting away with both of his Salamanders, so I would imagine Subutai was probably quite disappointed that it didn't get them. But the difference being is that that Shield of the Old Ones kind of salvaged that situation. We got zombies being punched by giant crocodiles using Space Marine Power Fists. Here we are, the glorious uh, setting of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Corpse Cart nearby as well, going to be ringing. The toll is being uh, paid for sure as these zombies do get sauced up in stats, and both players are trading relatively equally in terms of value. However, it looks like Tim there got a little bit of a leg up. He got a lot of damage on Manfred, although finally the Salamanders did get routed. Okay, so it looks like Manfred did sacrifice a lot of his HP to get in there and use a zombie summon on top of them, maybe? Or maybe some of the skeletons pushed through after them. I'm not quite sure. Banishment going down from the Battle Toad in the back. Going to be hitting Sternsman. Ooh, nice hit there. Hits the Sternsman skeletons and goes through a Skeleton Spearman unit. Talk about value there for old Tim. 
Now, both sides have healing. Vampires obviously have quite a bit of healing as well. Uh, not as much as Kislev. Kislev, of course, is the Dark Lord of Healing, one of the more OP factions in the game. Cohort of Fodl does get nailed with the Breath Attack, and there is going to be uh, what appears to be some sort of a spell going down here. Yes, an Earth Blood from the Dinos, which is going to be triggering a map wide heal. And uh, Manfred does extend pretty deeply into enemy lines. Is he going to be going in? Okay, he's dropping his zombie summon, very much uh, flying through the flames and fire here, like a movie, uh, movie action hero from the 80s. And the zombie summon's going to be good. It'll tar pit some of these bad boys. And it looks like he's making his way over to the salamanders. He does manage to push, push through some of the zombies. So if you guys... It, it's, it's a bit of a weird thing in this game. But even if you have a unit engaged, you can spam click like super rapidly onto a unit behind them. And sometimes if there's a little bit of side area like this, your units will find a way to get through. But it, you have to keep spam clicking because the AI is going to keep trying to reset back to the unit it's fighting. But if you spam click, it's a really good way to shut down missiles with zombie factions like uh, you know uh, Vampire Counts, Vampire Coast. Uh, Tomb Kings can do it very well with Skeletons. Any faction can do it, really. Skaven are also quite good at it, but those swarming factions are uh, who really excel. But big old Manfred does get in there, nails down that Salamander hunting pack, and if he can take those offline, it's going to be the age of the vampire counts for sure. Those Cryptors and those Graveguard and uh, those heavy hitters aren't going to have to worry about getting shot. So these Salamanders on their way back in. The other one's at 23 models. Manfred probably going to be trying to drop a Buna here soon, as we do see what appeared to be a Blood Statue of Spite going down from this land. Didn't do too much, but the Cryptors are pushing into the secondary, but Tim is pretty well defended back here. He does have his Skeleton Spears at the ready, but the uh, Graveguard will dominate them in combat, like super hard. But Feral Cold Ones are also there, so both players kind of bringing the correct counters out to each unit type. Salamanders have re-emerged with uh, 32 models still, so full firing capacity, and they do immediately force those Cryptors back. So uh, Subutai is going to want to retreat those. You don't want your Cryptors being shot by anything that has like anti-large, anything really. They have light armor. So Manfred going balls deep for it back here, eating a lot of shots, obviously nowhere near his healing cap. He's a big, scary, evil vampire. So not only is he regenerating ones of magic right now, but he's also healing in combat because of the hunger. So as he does fight here in combat, he's going to be regenerating a bit of his HP. Invocation does go down, and he gets a bit of damage on the Salamander. So good picks uh, on both sides for sure. In the backfield, we do see the White King chasing down the other Salamander hunting pack. So Subutai clearly knows which ones are the big threat, and is going to be going after the hunting packs to the best of his ability. But Manfredo's getting very, very low, and the Lizard numbers on the battlefield are looking uh, quite serious. Lizards are actually um, one of the top-ranked factions in multiplayer right now. I believe they have like the second or third highest win rate. Very, very strong in Domination mode. And uh, Land Battle, I'm sure they're okay too, but Land Battle is a very different beast, right? Very, very different beast. Like in Domination, Slanesh is very good because they don't have to play into like defensive formations as much. They can pull you apart, whereas in Land Battle, Slanesh is considered to be weaker from what I'm seeing because people can just kind of box up against them and deny the flanking and stuff. Um, but on the other side, we do see the White King getting caught a little bit. So Tim the Wild, there was some counterplay here on the far side. Does get the anti-large Cold Lens Spear Riders, but it looks like old Subutai here is going to be slipping away at the White King. Despite the poison, I think he will find a way out of this. And he's also pressing the back objective with Graveguard. So not a bad idea. When the Graveguard get there, they'll certainly be tough to take down. Granted, if there are some Feral Cold Ones, even the Cold Lens Spear Riders might be able to put some hurt on them. Now, objectives uh, still owned by the Lizards, actually. So in the middle, it does look like Tim the Wilder has a pretty substantial amount of bodies on the objective who do have good capture weight. Pretty much Subutai's entire starting army was expendable. Skeletons and zombies do have the expendable trait, so they're not going to be able to provide five capture weight. They only provide two. Here we do see the White King battling it out with Feral Cold Ones, and Manfred is just diving after skirmishers and skink skirmishers and things like that, and unfortunately getting nibbled on. And those Salamanders are quite a pain in the butt, man. They've been shooting, you know, more or less paying for themselves despite the Bunas and massive efforts here from the Vampire Counts to take them down. Good usage of the zombie summon. Anybody who played a lot of uh, land battle tournaments as an Empire player, I can't tell you how many times my silver bullets have been shut down by zombie summons. And uh, it's funny because, man, in domination mode, the Empire crushes the vampire counts nowadays, at least in my experience. But, um, man, for so long, the Empire was oppressed so horribly by vampire counts in old land battle days. Yeah, it's a different beast, I guess. Although, I don't know. When vampire counts and Empire play this, they, just, they basically just play it like land battle. They both get their home objective and just kind of have a land battle in the middle. I suppose it could be due to the toolbox nature of, um, you know, it's kind of like in StarCraft, for example. Uh, you're building Marines, okay, against a Zerg player. And the Zerg player is going to be building, uh, you know, they'll have Zerglings. And then they're like, oh no, my Zerglings are getting wrecked by this Marine blob. Let's get some Roaches. They have good armor and Bane links, whatever, you know. But in the, let's say in this example, it's going to be Roaches, who are, you know, Marines can still kill them, but they're hard to kill, right? So the, the Terran player would then mix in uh, Marauders, like the heavy hitter, anti-armor guys. And just like in domination mode, you can call it, both players can call it answers for one, uh, one another's thing. So it's more like a traditional RTS, whereas land battle is very much like a, you know, a kind of true old school uh, Total War style of PvP, which you know, both are great. 
So the objective here is going to be starting to flip, and uh, it does look like the Vampiros do have a lot of stuff. So Skeleton Spears and uh, Corpse Guards, have, of course, provide a little bit. Direwolves is going to be creeping around the back of the formation, but we do see Tim's formation being pushed back by the inevitable uh, presence of the Vampire Lord. He's moving up, and he is crumping that cohort of Waddle, but he better be careful. Supatai could definitely lose his Lord uh, in a very, very quick moment if he's not paying attention. If the Salamanders and some Skinks get some good firepower in there, he could get pounded. And I really do think Manfred needs to get away. He is actually dazed by the Cohort of Faudel. The Sacred Croxigors do have that dazed ability, so when they punch you in the face, just like real life, it probably slows down your speed and, uh, you know, staggers your defenses a bit. But we do see the dreaded Mortis Engine arriving. Mortis Engines are pretty damn good, but Lizards do have a lot of assets for shooting them, so it requires the Vampire Count player to micro a ton to keep those kind of things alive. Manfred sitting at 3,500 HP. Mortis Engine is going to be healing itself. It has a lot of HP and a lot of cushion for healing as well. And the Dire Pack was able to squeak into the backfield, getting on top of the Salamander Hunting Pack. So it must have come through the trees here. Very, very sneaky. A couple skank cohorts moving in. Tim the Wilder calling in heavy hitters to try and push back. So basic spanking paddle Croxigors. And if you guys are lizard players or aspiring lizard players, the Cohort of Faddle is basically like your Butchers of Kalkengard. They're so incredibly good. Uh, middle objective does flip to the Vampires, though, and their chaff is holding out, man. There's a lot of bodies here and a lot of HP for the lizards to get through but the lizards are getting a bit of a second win we do see the points very very close uh in terms of uh you know the objectives here but i guess the points are a little bit far apart but it's still to the point where uh, we'll have to see in a second yeah i i the vampires there's some give and take for both player uh, both players here but manfred going after the battle toad now this has been you know how they have those like old myths from like oh yes it was the doom of many a sailor when they hear the song of the siren you know those ridiculous like old world kind of uh things which are just awesome the, the, the battle toad i would say is like the siren of multiplayer like he lures you in with his voluptuous soft body and um you think you're going to be able to kill him but you don't and then uh <laughs> and then he heals and you wasted all this time and you get your characters surrounded like this uh the battle toad is the siren of total war multiplayer in my opinion you think you can kill them but they just always slip away it's very very tough to kill the battle toads for some godforsaken reason their stats are bad their melee defense is bad i guess it's the hp their aura, I don't know. There's just the intimidation of their little angry toad face. I don't really know what it is, but it's something in that ballpark. So Mortis Engine's doing great, though. And this is really problematic for the for the lizards because the Mortis Engine's going to be draining all these guys with the Reliquary Corruption. You're going to see it turn on in just a second once the Mortis gets a melee. Up oh, there it is. And uh, on top of that, it's going to be healing the Vampire Unit. So the Mortis Engine, I believe they did yet. So it does damage for a second, power recharge, and it heals your nearby units and gives magic attacks, which isn't super relevant in the lizard matchup, but it can be in other ones as well. So Cryptors and the Sternsmen have arrived, and the Lizards are being pushed back on several fronts. Oops, hit the wrong button there. I usually don't do that one. It's kind of like, you can pretty much see everything on the minimap here anyways, right? I know there's a lot of, like, Total War, um, old-school Total War competitive players, and even some streamers, I suppose, who play from outer space. They'll be on, like, debug camera, and just, like, it just looks like pixels on the ground. I don't know how people play like that. I know it gives you a slight competitive advantage, but I'd rather, like, man, it just takes all the immersion out of the game. I don't know, at least for me. But to each their own. Graveguard pushing up. Lizard's kind of looking a little bit uh, a little bit rough right now. They do get their Salamanders back in, but now we could potentially see Manfredo's power, right? If uh, Manfredo does have the uh, Buna, which he should, uh, because his man's wins he's been fighting the entire game. He's probably generated 7, 10, 15 wins of magic, so he's able to cast way more Bunas than most characters, which I think is uh, Manfred's very, very underrated there. So the Fady Buna's going to be going down, laughing in the face of the Salamanders. And the Vampires are getting good momentum now. Um, we do see a couple Croc scores moving in, but the Cryptor should be able to handle them. Mortis Engine pushing into the secondary, supporting the Graveguard as they move up, and also draining down some of the Dino units. But that Buna is super clutch, and that's going to be taking a ton of pressure off Subutai. Because if this, this Salamander was able to kind of sit back here and shoot and wear down these Cryptors, the Croxagors would probably be able to get some more forward momentum. You do see a big onslaught of units coming in. It's going to be Cryptors and Cryptors and more zombies and skeletons. All the spooky uh, units of the night. I really think that, um, you know, it's weird saying this, but it is 2024. I think that Vampire Counts need a buff to their cavalry. I feel like Black Knights and... Um, and even, I mean, the Blood Knights are fine, I suppose, but the Black Knights, they're like cheaper cavalry, both the basic variant and the barded variant. I feel like they need a little bit of a buff. Um, I don't know, because like vampires have no range and they did get a big leadership nerf, which they really needed because they're really obnoxious before in, uh, in uh, on the objectives and just kind of in their grinding power. But um, I think like a nice change that would put, they're doing good now. Vampires are actually sitting at a 55% win rate, give or take in multiplayer. Um, so they're doing great. And that's in tournaments, of course. Uh, so they're in a good spot, but I, I do think you could, like, their play style is a little bit stagnant. It's mostly, like, kind of similar builds. I think if you, like, augmented their cavalry a little bit, and I'm not talking much, maybe, like, 25 gold off their Black Knights or something, like, that could be kind of a cool change, but I don't know. It's weird, I know. Saying Vampire Count should get buffed. For years, they were the scourge of multiplayer. Just years. Just all the most villainous players would play Vampire Counts, and it was so brutal. 
But looking at the objectives here, we do see the vampire counts on objective two. On the back point, Lizard's getting a little bit cheeky. It looks like they were trying to steal that, but Subutai does get some zombies and some skeleton warriors over there. Um, Lizard's honestly looking like they've lost it. The Mortis Engine was allowed to cackle the entire game. It's healing cap. Manfred is cackling and healing cap. It just seems like Tim couldn't quite finish off some of these big assets, which are the uh, breadwinners here for Subutai. And we do see the uh, White Kings coming back in with the recharges of Scav's Grave. Not a ton of value there, but Cryptors are a very solid answer against Crocs Corps. Uh, they trade very well into them, and that is going to be GG well played. So good match. Really cool to see Vampire Counts taking the dub against a top-tier faction. I would say, typically, um, I would say this matchup is probably even Lizardman favored. Uh, so he was able to do really well with Manfred. He kept him alive. He did take some beatings, but his Bunos, his zombie summons, and all that other play was very, very good. So um, I dug that. And seeing a Mortis Engine come in against a, like, a shooting-heavy faction and surviving, that's an accomplishment for Vampire players for sure. And yeah, for Tim, um, opening with the two Salamanders, like maybe, maybe they were just too big of a target for Bunas. It could have been a case where maybe if he just goes, I don't know, yeah, how do you actually do that against Manfred? I guess Regrowth could be better than Earthblood, but he was going for the lore passive spam, but Regrowth does counter the Buna very well. So maybe Regrowth could have done it. And um, what other things could be useful? So maybe some Pterodon Riders up in the sky, Colossodon Hunters or something to like rip things apart. I don't really know. Uh, Tim's a, a much better player than I am, and on top of that, he's um, much better at Lizardman. So I'd be curious to see what his thoughts would be post-game if he was giving his post-mortem on this. Anyways, guys, take care of yourselves. See you next time, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed all the analogies about Battletoads being uh, sweet sirens of the sea. And uh, that's going to be it for tonight.